chemotherapy is finally entering the field of breast cancer, even if a bit later in comparison with other tumors. We talked about this topic with Professor Lisha Emmons, we met during the immunotherapy bridge meeting that is ongoing here in Naples, Italy. Professor Emmons, today the title of our lecture was uh, Breast Cancer Immunotherapy, The Time Has Come. Which is the biological rationale for immunotherapy in breast cancer and why this delay in comparison with other cancers? So I think traditionally breast cancer has been considered a non-immunogenic disease that's immunologically silent by many breast cancer doctors. Um, however, over the last 20 years or so, um, accumulating data suggests that some breast cancers become infiltrated with lymphocytes or immune cells that are capable of fighting the tumor. Um, this tends to be more likely to happen for HER2 positive breast cancers and especially for triple negative breast cancers and uh, breast cancers that are infiltrated with these lymphocytes tend to have better outcomes even to traditional chemotherapy. So that's a sign that breast cancers can be immunologically active and that some of them may be capable of responding to immunotherapy. I think the other challenge, other than this perception that breast cancers may not be immunologically active, is that for most breast cancers, we do have a lot of drugs that work. Uh, for example, for ER breast cancers, we have both endocrine therapies as well as chemotherapies, and there are a variety of drugs that we have that target HER2. Triple negative breast cancers have remained the unmet need. Um, they're defined by what they are not, and endocrine therapy and HER2-directed therapies do not work for triple negative breast cancers. They have not had any therapeutic targets, so historically, we've only been left with chemotherapy to treat triple negative breast cancers. Um, they tend to be the most likely to be immune activated, so they were the first place that immunotherapy was tested. At the last ESMO Congress last September in Barcelona, great news for immunotherapy as a treatment for triple negative breast cancer. The results of the Keynote 522 study have been reported and the data are really very exciting. Which kind of study is Keynote 522 and uh, what did it show? So Keynote 522 is an exciting study. It's the first phase three clinical trial um, to report the clinical activity and clinical benefit of adding uh, PD-1 or PD-L1 blockade to standard chemotherapy for early stage uh, triple negative breast cancer. So this is the first large clinical trial in the neoadjuvant or adjuvant setting to show a benefit for adding immunotherapy to standard chemotherapy for early stage disease. There's, there is a perception that the earlier in uh, the course of a cancer you use immunotherapy, the more benefit it's likely to have. So there's been an interest in moving it from the metastatic into earlier stage neoadjuvant and even adjuvant settings. So Keynote 522 enrolled patients to receive either standard chemotherapy with pembrolizumab or standard chemotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting. It had two um, primary endpoints. One of them uh, was the pathologic complete response rate and at ESMO, it was reported that the addition of pembrolizumab increase, increased the pathologic complete response rate by almost 14% relative to chemotherapy alone. That's a clinically significant change in this patient population. The other primary endpoint is event-free survival, so disease relapse over time. And we had an early report um, of that data at ESMO, but it's still very, very early, and I think we need to let that data mature um, before we're really confident of what that outcome shows. However, that also shows a promising um, trend as the curves are starting to separate in favor of adding chemotherapy to, or adding immunotherapy to chemotherapy. So Keynote uh, 522 uh, has been hailed as a practice-changing study, but do you agree, and why is it so important? Well, I think Keynote 522 is important because it is the first study that evaluates adding immunotherapy in the early stage setting. Um, it, the results are exciting. Um, I'm not sure I'm ready to say that it's practice changing at this point. I would like to see additional data to support the pathologic response rate. That could be biomarker data that explains the, you know, the mechanism underlying the improvement or even more mature event-free survival. I think um, it has great promise though and I think it's likely to be practice changing. But at the moment, we ha already have uh, one checkpoint inhibitor that's already approved for uh, triple negative breast cancer, that is atezolizumab. Which results can we expect with this immunotherapy and uh, in which setting can be used? 
The combination of atezolizumab and napaclitaxel has been shown to benefit patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer that express PDL1 in their immune cells. It works the best if it's used first line. It can improve both progression free survival by about two and a half months as well as overall survival um, by about seven months. So it's a very exciting opportunity for patients with newly diagnosed metastatic triple negative breast cancer that's PDL1 immune cell positive to get immunotherapy that's likely to improve them long term. Up to now, we have uh, phase three trials on immunotherapy only for triple negative breast cancer. Do you think this approach will be extended also to other types of breast cancer? Are there ongoing studies already? So we have uh, one phase two trial that was a randomized placebo-controlled phase two trial in HER2 positive breast cancer. Uh, that trial showed that adding a tezeluzumab to trastuzumab amtanzine for metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer um, can demonstrate a clinical benefit for patients with metastatic HER2 positive disease relative to trastuzumab amtanzine alone. And the perception is that that um, provides uh, good support for launching a rigorous phase three trial to definitively show that benefit. For ER positive breast cancer, those tumors tend to be cold and tend not to have immune cells in them. So I think the challenge there is finding the right combinations to transform those tumors into hot tumors mm -hmm. so that immune checkpoint uh, agents can work. What can we expect from immunotherapy research on breast cancer in the near future? Are there other immunotherapy approaches being investigated? I think we'll see uh, more and more interesting combinations, uh, novel IO, IO combinations, and immunotherapy combinations with targeted agents that have a really strong rationale. There are a number of other interesting things like adoptive T-cell therapies that folks are starting to get very interested in applying to breast cancer. That's a bigger challenge uh, than it is for hematologic malignancies like leukemia because the T-cells can get to the leukemia cells a little bit easier. So that is of great interest as well as CAR T-cells. Um, and then of course vaccines uh, are of great interest as well because ultimately you might be able to move them back and hopefully prevent breast cancer from happening in the first place.